Okay, awesome, awesome. So let's try it on with uh, the second part of the Moodle one. So I was talking about RAMs earlier on. So you have different types of RAM. So you have, uh, like I said earlier on, so it starts from the very, very earlier RAMs, right? In your, uh, before the Pentium, Pentium 1, Pentium 2, Pentium 3. I think uh, one of my first pieces uh, was uh, a Pentium 1, not Pentium 1 or Pentium 2. Oh my gosh. If you have 64 MB RAM, you're a big boy. You have a very, very fast computer at that time, right? Uh, with Windows 98, Windows 90, Windows 95, Windows 98, they need that operating system needs a very, very small RAM, random access memory, where it performs all of the function. Because everything you have in your hard disk is just 2 gig. Your hard disk size is just 2 gig. So if your hard disk is 2 gig, it then means that everything you're going to be processing at a time might just be, let's say, 1 MB. Your floppy disk, or floppy, yes, your floppy disk was just 1.44 MB. You're going to see most of those things uh, in this course, right? All of those sizes. So your random access memory where you're going to be performing tax within your PC, these are their versions and their type. So your system can be using a DDR2, can be using a DDR3. So this is DDR1, actually. So it's just called DDR. So that's DDR1. And you now have DDR2, 3, up to 4. So very recent systems are going to be using GDDR, right? So that's that for RAM. So this is how they look like. Uh, SIM, uh, DDM, SODI, then you now have. So they come in different ways. Now, memory chips are sold that to the board to create a memory module which is placed with a memory slot on the motherboard. So your system can have, okay, let me go back to the slide that have, okay, right, this is it. So this is what your RAM slots look like. So your RAMs are to snap into any of this uh, module. So you're going to be asking yourself, how many module, how many uh, space can your RAMs allow for? So have one slot, can have two slots, you can have three slots. So that's to say if your system comes with four gig RAM, the question you're asking yourself is that how many slots do I have? So if you have two slots and you just have one stick of four gig RAM, you not you have room for upgrade. That means you could add another four gig RAM to it. So making eight gig. For instance, the system I'm using now is a Core i5 system. I'm running on Windows 10. I have the capacity of going up to 16 gig. But what I have here is just eight gig RAM. So uh there's a application i want to run so it's making me need more ram so by next week or before the month runs out i want to make sure that i get the maximum ram the system can take now i have four gig four gig in two in this place so what i'm going to do i'm going to trash out or give out the four four gig ram and get two stick of eight eight gig and put into this system i'm going to have 16 gig. now every system have its maximum amount of ram you can take you could google it out you could check the manufacturer site for your particular PC. So when you're trying to do upgrade, you want to see what is it just like a building, for instance. A three bedroom flat you have. Somebody says, okay, please, I have, I've given birth to 100 children. Or I've given birth to, I'm expecting some visitors. People are coming for holiday. The point is that there's a limit to how much persons that you can accommodate in that building. Even if you call an architect, please come and get me some story buildings. Or rather, come and take, get me some, some, uh, some floors on top of this, my building. The architect is going to examine your building, do some better assessment, check the building, check what it can take, and tell you this is the maximum. That's how you have it in every other system. Every system has the maximum amount of RAM they can take, right? So the manufacturer makes it so. So the system, fortunately, maybe can go just 4 gig. So all that systems cannot use so much RAM, right? So that's that. So memory modules, so you have L1, L2, L3. So it's very, very self-explanatory. Uh, I see something, the speed of memory has a direct impact of how much data a processor can process in a given time. Yes. So the higher your RAM is, the more faster your system becomes. So a very, very smart way to make your system faster is to upgrade your RAM. Yes, you can actually upgrade a processor, but most people don't do it. Yes, I have a system in the office that I use that used to be a dual core system it was upgraded to core i3 right so you can actually upgrade a processor
processor. So memory module, what they do is that they have what they call non-parity, parity check and ECC error correction code. When you start doing a talking later on, you're going to see some of these things, right? Because if you are given a house to do some manufacturing, there is no how you're not going to have code. Rather, error. Your brain that does all of the processing, for instance, there's no how you're going to do garbage in, garbage out. And once in a while, you're not going to do or you're not going to have some errors. So these RAM modules, they have all of these inbuilt in them. So that's why you have some system crash, some system restart, some systems uh, give an error message. It's so that they can have smooth ride while trying to process stuff for you. They have adapter kind of explained this already. So you call this uh, expansion slots. They are behind your system. I've shown you that in previous slide. So if I need a sound adapter, let's say I do, I'm a music director, I need to do some mixing. Uh, today I was coming back from a service and somebody was talking about a phone to Yamaha keyboard. I told him all you need is the software for that particular phone connected to the, the, the what's it called, connected to the uh, piano and you're able to do some mixing and recording and whatever. Now, if I have a desktop, I could get this uh, sound card add it on it, I'm able to mix faster, I'm able to, because I now have a separate RAM added to my RAM, same thing with video card, if I'm going to be playing games, right, the video memory of my system in bit might not be up to what I need to play some, some games, right, then you have your NIC, your network interface card, so this is just your normal network interface card, see your activity light and your status light, so this gives you a uh, Opportunity for instance, if there's some kind of network configuration you're going to be needing two uh, NICs, right? So, if you need the two NICs, then for instance, if I am picking internet wirelessly on this my laptop and I need to share internet through a switch to another PC, I'll need an iron. So, that, that's to say, I need two NICs, but you can also buy an NIC adapter that have two, right? Uh, inbuilt. Uh, so that's that. So this this is what it looks like in your PC, but it comes in different sizes, or other different types. So you have your PCI normal PCI, you have your mini PCI, PCI extended, your riser card, your accelerated graphics. Board. So the AGP is normally used for graphics, right? Normally used for graphics. Uh, so you have your storage types. This is your normal hard disk. You have your PC or rather your desktop, then your optical drive, your tape drive your solid state drive so you have most of these are also common but these persons that use desktops they still use this who uses a cd again right people prefer to use a hard disk a hard disk adapt uh, external uh, because what's the size of your optical disk for cd is maximum 800 mb for dvd is 4.7 gigs so if you have that it then means that but if you even have a flash drive most flash drive for instance, I have a flash drive that is uh, 32 gig. So it's how many times this? So why do I need to bother myself about this? When I can just, if I need to play a, a song in my car, I could just load a thousand MP3s of old schools, new school, contemporary. I put them in a the flash drive, put it in my car, and I'm going. But if I put this here, I just have only eight, ten tracks. So these are different ways you could store information okay that's that any other important very important thing so these are the different sizes so this is the one used for your hard disks your desktop this is the one used for your laptop this is not so common right um, semiconductor storage so more recent systems now have what they call the ssd they're very fragile uh they get tampered recovery is always very very hard unlike the very rugged 3.5 and 2.5 bit. So newer systems, you don't have options. If you buy a newer system now, with the latest technology, let's say 10 generation, 9 generation, uh, upwards, you're going to come with SSD, right? Uh, so this is a, 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 what's it called? A CD-ROM. So these are the different types, the description, uh, description and call their size. So you have from 700 to up to and even at times some some manufacturers do up to 800 so the dvd rom read only uh so you have 4.7 1.5 1.6 1.7 1.8 1.9 1.10 1.11 1.12 1.13 1.14 1.15 1.16 1.17 1.18 1.19 1.20 1.21 1.22 1.23 1.24
maximum 8.5. The BD ROM used in films, in games, they can have up to this size. Okay, so you have video port. So HDMI, display port, DVI, Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt, VGA, RCA. At times you can call this um what do you call it again? AV audiovisual. So but the appropriate name is RCA. So most people in technology line in video in uh, what's it called? They, they normally refer to this as uh, AV. Uh, audio visual so this is the audio the, the white and the red and this is the video the what's it called the yellow so this is VG also this is also very common this is very common so you have it's actually 15 pin this is actually a serial cable um, it's 15 pin you have another serial cable that is 9 pin we use that for Cisco devices switches and routers HDMI is common also DVAC a little bit older, not so common. So this is common, 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 common. Yes, I think that's all for video. So you have other ports. Ah, it's very old. So you have you call this the PS2. The keyboard is always uh, purple. The mouse is always green. So that's how you know them. Uh, for most of us that have used PCs uh, those days. Uh, that's how you identify them. You're also going to see the diagram, right? Like a, a little picture of that, or just by the side. It's convention. No matter the manufacturer, they must make sure that they do all of that laterally. So you see the picture of a keyboard here. You see a picture of a mouse here. So it tells you that that's where to insert it. Even if you don't know it by the color, but I'm just telling you that that's the color. Like the audio game port, the network. The USB very common to this. So this is your ID, integrated device electronics. You have that within your system. That's what connects your motherboard to your hard disk, your motherboard to your floppy disk, your motherboard to your CD-ROM. These are for older systems. So SATA is most commonly used. If you have an external hard disk, right, it's going to use your SATA cable. So this is the data. This is power. So if this if this is inside your system. The uh, what's it called? Your motherboard, rather, your power pack is going to have a cable that comes into the hard disk. Then this SATA data is now going to go into the motherboard, right? So the power pack supplies the hard disk, then the hard disk sends data into the motherboard. So the, the processor and the RAM picks it up from the motherboard and does all of the work. Okay, adapters and converters. So you might have a DVI, you don't have a VGA, so you get an adapter, you plug it in, you extend it. You can have, I have this in office, I bought one recently. You can have some systems, actually newer systems, they don't have this uh, Ethernet port, your NIC card, right? They expect that if you're using those systems, you should, you should use wireless. So uh, if you don't have that, what do you do? You just get an adapter, depending, $10 to $20, depending the country you are listening to this class from or you just um uh what's it called once you do that you can plug this into your pc then you plug your uh what's it called you plug your stuff here then um so this molex to sata adapter yes you have some power packs that don't have this sata that's not so recent because sata is a newer technology right so you could plug this into the power pack then you get access into it your hard disk okay what else again input devices so all of these are inputs anything that can help you get data into your computer is your it's an input device your keyboard your mouse your flatbed scanner what's going to help you scan your documents your joy your joy dicks and your kvm switches uh, all of these are uh, input devices the more input devices your touch screens your stylus if you use your magnetic stripe a reader your barcode scanner all of these are input devices right same with the digital camera the webcam the signature pad the smart card reader your microphone like the microphone i'm using to do this class now is an input device typically anything that gets data whether it's text uh, image audio and uh, pictures that's the four file formats anything that can help you get data into your pc an input device.
of course you have your near field communication nfc card terminals your official your fingerprints your voice recognition scanners all of these are input devices output devices anything that can help you get data out your speakers your projectors your your vr headset um, your printers your, uh, your speakers your headphones they are all uh, same thing with your projectors they are all uh, output devices they come in different types so this is an older technology a more recent than a new technology uh, samsung um, well what's their name again companies that are uh, that, that when it comes to display that's their niche they they, they will have more recent technologies right if you check their their technology updates you see that they also have more recent technology so this is older it will consume more power followed by this followed by this right and tells you how crisp how sharp hd uh, hd uh, hxd how how sharp and how much wide you can go uh virtual reality your headsets uh, all of these are also companies you have in your pc of course your printers your printers are going to help you get information out you have a document uh under different types inkjet is going to use an ink impact thermal heat laser so just hover around it you could do you could, you could do printer then you have your 3d printer very awesome you can get to youtube and watch this 3d printer if you have any place where you could see this in action very awesome 3d it's used in manufacturing it's used in iot modeling it prints anything right it has a mode like something like looks like clay but it has its particular type so you just have in 3d what you want it to mold and and that's all it's going to mold this stuff for you all of these type of printers use what they call driver so driver is just a piece of software that helps is a, a software to communicate with what hardware right that's that all speakers and headphones and computer disassembly so assembly disassembly so assembly is put all of your components together disassembly is to put your components apart maybe for diagnosis purpose so you have a short video your LMS please watch it and get to understand what's been said there okay so you have a video also that demonstrates all of these things awesome video that is very self-explanatory Okay, that's all for module one. Thank you very much for listening. I'll see you in module two.